think so. And ready to rock and roll on five, four, three, that was a bad three, two, one, and go. Well, welcome everyone to our first ACCA Global Podcast. This is Genesis. This is it. This this is it. It's a case of we're going to have we're going to have Netflix coming after us. This is the start of it all. And and what company am I in today? I mean, I have, I have the pleasure, the honour, oh, I mean, the accolades to introduce our young man today, our young, newly qualified ACCA member, Ronnie. Mr. Mr. Patton, welcome to the show. Thank you, James. It's great to be with you. Well, was that a nice you, introduction? <laughs> that was some introduction. Did my mother write that for you? But she, she's put she's put the bribe in the post. That, that's yeah. all it is. That's all it is. Well, we're we're ready to rock and roll. This is this is episode one, Ronnie. Oh, trail blazer. I don't know how we're going to cope, but we're going to get <laughs> we're going to get through it today. So for anyone who is tuning in for the first time, and and that is everyone because we've not done one of these before. This is the ACCA Global Podcast, which is going out globally around the world. I'm delighted to introduce Ronnie, who is representing. Where are from today, Ronnie? From Northern Iron, as we call it, or Northern Ireland, if we want to be polite. If I'm good at the editing, I'll put some subtitles in on that one. <laughs> good idea. But uh, yes, and, and oh, hosting from, from the lovely UK, our first country ticked off as well. So for anyone new tuning in, the podcast is designed for ACCA members, students. If you're in the accountancy field, wherever you're watching this around the world, it's all about insights from members, students, whatever association you have with the ACCA, or if you're just starting your accounting career. I mean, whoa, in terms of the first one, the, the, the bar, that standard, it, it is, it is, it's the pinnacle. This is, this is cutting edge. <laughs> There's only one way to go. <laughs> well, it's top of the pops now, but you know our, our, our instruments are, are plugged in, so you can hear our voices. So we're all right. But, uh, so uh, coming on to the first bit, Ronnie, I I'll leave the introductions to you. I mean, talk us through, short and sweet. Okay, I started studying ACCA in 1975 when I was three years of age, very advanced child. Uh, I decided not to go to university, but to begin studying accounting and working at the same time. And I became a member in 1981. And about eight years later, joined my local committee and uh, have had a ball ever since. Wow, gosh. Um, I, I don't want to tell you what I was doing in 1981. Um... <laughs> <laughs> I suspect nothing. <laughs> As, as, as a comparison for our uh, for our viewers out there, it's a case of I qualified in 2017. Yes. Yeah, and and I'm already feeling the strain. So. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, well, well, no answer one, to that. Well, so, okay. Well, for anyone new visiting as well, where it's always in the guest choice whatever drink we have. So whoever comes on the podcast, I have the exact same drink, uh, within reason. So Ronnie, what are, what are we going for today? We're on good, strong coffee. No milk, no sugar. Oh, look at this. Rocket at this. fuel. I've gone, look at this. Oh, oh, ready ready oh. to rock and roll today. I tell you. King of the day. Mm -hmm. Yes. Great stuff. Yeah. So I'm, I'm working in, working in uh, as, a, as a lecturer and people who work in tax, apparently black coffee is, is, is the tax man's drink. Is it? Oh, I didn't know that. I, I didn't know that either. Yeah, I'm going to have to take up tax. <laughs> Yes, apparently we've not got time for milk. We've not got time for sugar. <laughs> it's all about the numbers. So I, oh, okay, fair play. That's all right. Well, well I, I dropped the sugar because I'm an athlete. Oh, okay. Given that you can't see me from here, Diane, I can get away with that. <laughs> what athletics are you into, Ronnie? <laughs> well, actually, in my younger days, I was a high jumper. Oh, crikey. Gosh. Wow. Well, th this nicely leads on to uh, as to how we, how we know each other, shall we say, Indeed. because... Oh, I mean, talk, talk the viewers through. How do we know each other and be nice? <laughs> well, there's only, there's only one way to do that. There's only can only be nice about knowing you, James. Uh, we met, I think I'm right in saying first to face, face to face for the first time at a member engagement conference. And uh, it was great for me because I'd gone to it and I wasn't entirely sure if there's anybody else from the academic world. And uh, it was good to find a kin kindred spirit. I discovered that we both have if not the same sense of humor, we enjoy a good laugh. 
uh, and that's something I think is very important. It's important to enjoy what you're doing uh, and help share that enjoyment with other people. And I suppose the old cliche, life's too important to take it seriously. Now, now for any of the viewers out there, I, I, I didn't give him anything on that, so that was very sweet of you, I must say. But uh, yes, I, I'm, I'm early in my academic career and uh, I, I have wise Yoda with me today who, who has an abundance of knowledge in terms of it, which uh, we, we, will, we will definitely be tapping into later on in the podcast. But I, th I think to get us kicked off as to what the podcast is all about is a case of people out there and connections will look for us on LinkedIn and whilst they actually connect with us, they, they need to get to know us a bit more, I would say, mm. so that it, it's not just that profile, it's also little bits about them as well. So, and again, with our, uh, for anyone who's been to my YouTube channel before, we run on a, uh, a tight zero pound budget as to, uh, as to the lovely notes we have prepared today. So I'm going to run you through uh, Ronnie, some quick fire questions, nice and easy, nothing, nothing controversial, but it depends on what you answer. Mm. But uh, it, it simply pick one or the other and the viewers will, oh gosh, I wasn't expecting that. So, uh, so number one, summer holiday or winter holiday? Summer, every time. Summer, every time. Have you, have you managed to get away this year? Uh, no, uh, not able to go. I have a, two holidays cancelled with COVID, so uh, we're having a short break next week, staycation about two hours from home. Wow, it, it, it's a good thing that the sun's always shining in Northern oh, Ireland. The, oh, the sun always shines in Northern Ireland. Oh, Did beautiful. my nose get longer there? <laughs> a, a, a sunny day for anyone who's not visited Northern Ireland is, is anything over 12 degrees, I would That's say. That's about it, yeah. That's about and, it. <laughs> and the clouds passing, shall we say. A gap in the clouds, we call it a sunny day. Exactly. Well, there you go, you see. I mean, it, that, that is, that is going to be the advert for Visit Northern Ireland in the future, I can tell now. That's uh, question number two, cats or dogs? Dog. Dog. Oh, you see, I'm a cat guy. I've got, to, got uh, two cats. Ah, uh, well, we'll not, uh, we'll not discuss that in too much depth. Oh, it's all right. Mind, well, mind it... you, I don't have a dog. You don't uh, have a dog? No, oh, right. I've got a share in a dog. A sh what, have you only bought the legs or something? Or... No. Uh, well, almost. My son has a dog uh, and... Uh, the dog is too frightened to be left on its own. So we'd have a rota for who looks after the dog when he's oh, at work. Spot on. If it's any consolation, my cat just sits there. That's all it does. It's, it just sits there and wants feeding and wants a, wants a pet. That, that, that's Actually, all it. My half dog doesn't do much else. But <laughs> certain feeds. It's more about the perfect pet, really. That's it. It, it is, yeah, yeah. Gosh, well, it, that actually nicely leads on because my cat doesn't wake me up too much. But yeah. uh, are you a morning person or an evening person? Evening. Evening. Interesting. Yeah. You say, gosh, you say, I've become more of a morning person. That's it. Gosh. <laughs> I don't I know just, what. No, I just find as I get older, I, I, my energy needs to build a bit. Hence the black coffee. Oh, so, so what you're saying is it, it's, it's all downhill for me from now on, basically. I, oh, no, I wouldn't go that far. I wouldn't go that far. But uh, it's certainly not uphill. <laughs> right. I bet I've been trying uh, recently this this whole new 5 a.m. start as well in terms of it. Yeah. Oh, it's, it's there, there are people out there who start at 5 a.m. And that, uh, yeah, they yeah. say it's, it's the four hour work week where they get all the stuff done mm. between five and nine because they're most productive in those hours. So uh, I've, I've heard people say that sort of thing. Yeah. I've never quite experienced it myself. <laughs> Maybe if this if this was an actual meeting, then it would say that that would be one of your action points for next time. That's right. Time. Yes, I, yeah. Personal <laughs> development point. Exactly. You see. Well, coming coming on to personal development, are you more sort of a books person or movie person? Books. Books. So yeah. same for me. I mm -hmm. just can't bring myself to be sat there for two three hours or something mm -hmm. on those lines. But I mean, favorite yeah. film? What would you go for? Oh, favorite film? Apocalypse Now. Apocalypse Now. See, I'm more, more Lord of the Rings, more Lord of the Rings fan. You see. Ah, no, that's a bit long for me. I know, no, well, that, <laughs> don't have the attention span for it. Wow, I reread uh, Rich Dad Poor Dad recently as well. I don't know if you've you've come across that. No, no. Oh, highly recommend it. Robert Kiyosaki, uh -huh. proper stuff. I would say. Yep. Yeah, pop it on the reading list. It's it's on mine. Yeah. Oh, hundred yep. uh, percent. And then final one: singing or dancing. <laughs> and you can uh, say you both. My wife, well, I was going to say, if you ask my wife, she'd say, please, 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 neither. 
Um, I have no talent in either of those spheres, but it doesn't stop me trying. So are we, go are we going on both? Or, or four? Uh, I suppose I'd prefer dancing because there's n not as much noise to annoy people. Wow. Well, I mean, introduction week at university. I think if we could incorporate some, uh, you know, yeah. uh, da dancing and singing, I mean, the, the student satisfaction surely will probably go down. Well. No, probably probably, yeah. doubt, doubt. <laughs> uh, yeah, well, OK. Yeah, I was trying to be positive. <laughs> we could go viral. We could. We could. <laughs> Some people have said I'm a virus already. Well, <laughs> well that, that kindly nicely moves on to actually getting to know my guest in more depth. So th uh -huh. this, this, this is the part of the podcast as to, well, it's, it's a world of LinkedIn out there where we pop things online, but it's actually seeing through that and understanding what their sort of background is, where they're mm -hmm. currently working. So, so what's been your sort of story, sort of short and sweet as to where are you okay. currently working and then what's your experience in the past that someone listening uh, may, may benefit from? Okay, currently working at Ulster University. We have four campuses across Northern Ireland and I work on our Jordanstown campus, which funny enough, if I walk five minutes down the road to the beach and look straight across Belfast Lock, I'm looking straight across at the building. Uh, I've been at the university since 2003. Prior to that, worked in my local college, a couple of miles along the road. Uh, so I've been in full-time education now in total for 31 years. Uh, for that, I had a, a number of different roles, uh, probably links into ACCA and what attracted me to ACCA. Uh, I liked the, fa the fact that there wasn't a, a training contract because as I said earlier, I, I left school and decided I would become an accountant. I wasn't going to go to university. And the training contract just made me think, well, what happens if I don't like this? Mm, I'm, I I'm kind of caught. So I wanted to keep doors open and I started to study ACCA having got a job. And I changed job a few times as basically to get more skills, more experience as I went through the exams. Yeah, I've worked across the retail sector, the motor sector, a uh, little bit in manufacturing, financial services, and done some consultancy. And then uh, the opportunity came to teach part-time, and I just found, wow, this is fantastic. I love it. And what I particularly love is the, the interaction with students. Oh, absolutely spot on. And I mean, wow. I mean, who, whoever's going to hear this could be in any of those industries and you have a wealth of knowledge in them as well. Mm -hmm. So I'm in a different stage of my career where I've discovered working at university earlier on. And I, yeah. I think it's I think it's spot on. I think it's brilliant working with students. I think if, if you feel you're cut out for it, it's the best job in the world. Uh, but if you're not, it's like anything else. If it if you're not fitted to it, it's not enjoyable. I just find. I mean, I I keep saying I used to have a real job, and some people can think that's a bit flippant. But it's simply that uh, I just feel that I don't work at the moment. I, I do things uh, and get paid for them. It's wonderful. Mm. It doesn't feel like work. Um, dealing with students, and you know, even this morning somebody came to me with a bit of a problem, which they thought was a fairly major problem. It was relatively easy to solve simply because I knew the system. I mean, right. for the, the person involved, it was tricky enough, but you know, we, we got it solved fairly easily. And that's great because you spend a bit of time, somebody's day's better. Sometimes, as you know, James, you, you deal with something and somebody's life's better. Uh, that's not work, that's a privilege. Oh, 100% agree, um, oh wise Yoda. But, uh... <laughs> You see, the, the, I must make sure my children watch this. I've heard you said that. Well, well, well. <laughs> it's a case of well, we couldn't have timed the podcast any more timely, could we? It's yep. you see that that's that's why we're in this field. That's, that's it. it. That's a, yes, but I mean see, that's also what made me a great centre forward. That timing. Oh no! Now you see, it's it's a case of I, I'm more of a a, a hoofer, so uh, I, I was centre back. <laughs> Yep. So, as as you've seen when we've met face to face, I, I'm six foot two as well, yeah. and also yeah. because I was the tallest, I got yes. back as well. Back, so, yeah. Yeah. yeah, you look you look half decent. You could you could kick the ball first. So. <laughs> Same story, yeah. Yeah, that's <laughs> all right, doesn't it? You look quick up on the wing for you. But uh, yes, but well, actually, you, you touched on there as well your work with ACCA. So yep. if there's an ACCA member, student, or if, or if they work for ACCA around the world, what what sort of roles or interactions do you have with the professional body? 
Oh gosh, uh, a wide range, I suppose, over a number of years. I, I recall not long after I started teaching, going to the AGM for the what was then the Ulster District Society, now the Ulster Members Network. Uh, and it was quite funny, it, it's, it's almost connections. Uh, there was a guy there who had been at university with someone that worked with me. So therefore we had a, a connection, we had a chat. And half an hour later, when they went to uh, the election of, of the committee, he proposed me to be on the committee. I thought um, you were going to say he proposed to you then. Gosh. Yeah, no, no. <laughs> we could go viral again on this yeah, podcast. Well, that's, uh, that's a whole different story. Um, but uh, so he, he put my name forward for the committee. And uh, I suppose in truth, in those days, there weren't people bashing down the door to go on to local committees. So uh, I, w I was on the committee. And it was great because what I realized very quickly is you get to meet people that you wouldn't get access to otherwise. And the other bit, I suppose that I would, I would say to anyone who's particularly a newish member and, and hesitating what to do, do get involved because a colleague of mine asked me recently, why do you do this? Why do you, do you do all these things for ACCA? Uh, he said, do you get paid? I said, no, no, you don't get paid. It's all voluntary. I said, well, <laughs> even more so, why do you do it? Nice and simple. You meet nice people. Um, and that's that's the fact of the matter. I don't think I've ever met anyone in connection with ACCA where if I found myself sitting beside them at an event or a dinner, I would be concerned. Mind you, there are people who have said that it doesn't work the other way, but prefer not to develop that part of the conversation. Yeah, funny enough, I've heard that before as well about me. <laughs> but, you know, it, it, it's, it, it, it's a cliche, but the more you put in, the more you get out. And you meet great people. So I, I was on the local committee. Then uh, we, we have an Ireland, ACC is organising an all-Ireland basis. So I sat on what we then called the Ireland Executive Committee. Mm. And uh, back in those days before our, all our constitutions were reformed, we had presidents in the local regions. Uh, so I was privileged to become president of the Ireland region, as we called it oh, at that time. Oh, I'm not worthy. Yeah, well, I mean, it's, it's one of those things, uh, just being involved. And then that gave me a bit of profile and people then said to me, you know, would you not think of running for council? Um, and I did, and was fortunate enough with member support to be elected to council. And I've served six years now in council, I sat on a number of committees, uh, governance design, market oversight, regulatory board and uh, the standards board and I currently chair the standards board um, and all of that is really just a part of feeling plugged into the profession and trying to do something that brings benefit for members. Um, while you wouldn't see the standards board as the most exciting, it's important because it's important that we have rules and regulations that are understandable and that they're clear for members. Uh, but also a fantastic learning experience. You know, you and I know from our background in education, the work we do, part of the job is getting students into the mindset that it's lifelong learning, it's continual development. Uh, and I find that that's what teaching's about. You know, I go back to, I think it was Shaw said, to teach is to learn twice. So we're always learning, that keeps things fresh. Oh, we're still uh, going. And, yeah, and it's, it's good. I mean, actually in that context, I remember, going to my first staff meeting when I started in the college and I deliberately sat with away from my colleagues in my department because I thought I'll try and meet some other people. A fella sat down beside me and we started the chat and he was starting his last year and it's funny now as I'm even thinking about that story it's like the wheel has come full circle because this time next year I'll be starting my final year uh, and I said to him are you looking forward to retiring and he said not really. Where else would you get a job where you get a fresh start every year? And I thought, wow, that, that's a really insightful comment. And that has stayed with me since. It's just continual renewal, uh, new students coming in, new perspectives, uh, new relationships to be built. Just as I said earlier, it's not work. Yeah, oh, it, it's mega, if you, are, if you ask me. It's a case of, I've, I've, I've been down to London and I've bumped into old students who I've taught previously on the tube out yeah, of nowhere. Yeah. And I'll, I'll come and get a nudge. And, oh, you're James, you taught me um, introduction right. to finance and, and, actually, and made, it, yeah. made it fun. Oh, mm -hmm. Wow. <laughs> I mean, there's, there's nothing better. There's nothing better than that happening. Sure, there's not. You know, it's just, it's fantastic when you realise that what you're doing in the classroom is actually making an, an impact on people. Yeah, 
Oh, if you go, you go to see go to CPD events. Mm. Um, I've been been to a few uh, online now, and when we're allowed to go back to face to face, mm. and you bump into people there. We say, oh, James, you taught me for financial accounting in my second yeah. year at university. And, yeah. and I, th this was ridiculously complicated. But 10 minutes after you talking it through, mm -hmm. it, it, was, it, was, it was like having a it, lovely, yeah. nice pudding yeah. with it. That'd be great. Yes. Oh, mm. oh, who'd have thought an income statement and statement of financial <laughs> position could, could be described as like having a pudding? <laughs> That's a new one. I haven't heard that one before. Well, well, obviously, obviously it went down a treat. But yeah. uh, there, there are all these online forums now as well, which yeah. which uh, students out there, whether it be on, on Facebook or LinkedIn, there are groups out there. And I post on there, uh, one of my videos, just tips to help you actually pass the exams. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. people reply on there. And a couple of students reply and say, you taught me back in 2017, 2018, and I still hold all those together. This is really helpful. And it's just sharing ideas from it as well. It's, it's fantastic <laughs> yeah. with the modern technology. Uh -huh. It is. And, and knowing that the things that you've passed on to people get passed on again, you know, it's, I'm not sure if that's the correct definition of sustainability, but it, it, it works for me. Oh, fantastic. And um, j just just coming back to the actual uh, Global Council as well, because mm -hmm. I'll be honest, when I was when I was a student and when I actually qualified, I wasn't quite sure in terms of what it actually meant or what, what the mm -hmm. objective of it is. So could you, could you yeah. give us some insight as to if, if someone wants to get in contact with any of the Global Council members, wherever they may be based around the world, yep. what, what could they pose or what ideas or what, what are they looking okay. to fulfill? That's that's a really important question, I think. I'd probably start by saying the first thing is if you go to the website, you can find the list of council members and you can find where they're based. So uh, we have 39 members in council at the moment. It has recently expanded from 36. So we don't have someone from every country in the world, but all our members should be able to find someone that's reasonably local to them. So uh, I suppose what I would say is in connection with that two things, it's important to remember that actually a council member is required to take a global view rather than a local view. So we represent all members. Each, each council member represents all members, not just members in their locality. But in saying that, I would really encourage people to reach out and get to know their council members because uh, you're right, it is, it is a bit strange. Who are these people and what do they do? And I think one of the advantages of COVID has been that we're making much more use of technology and therefore people can reach us more easily, whereas previously it had to be face to face. Uh, and, you know, that can be great and there's a place for it, but it probably created a situation where there was a limit to the number of people that you could meet uh, and it made council perhaps a bit remote. Mm. No, so, no, I agree. Yeah, you know, it's a case that uh, there's the things from these podcasts as to, yeah. well, if, if someone's got a query now or anything mm -hmm. on those lines and they may actually watch this, they may be watching yeah. right now and they'll yeah. say, oh, I'll, I'll drop Ronnie a message, lovely well, chap and ask and ask how, how his dog is. Yeah, I, I, <laughs> yeah, I mean, I, I'm very open to that. I think, though, there is an issue about managing expectations. So let's let's talk a wee bit about the, the, the core question you asked, what do council do? So council represent the members and they set the strategy for ACCA and mold the strategy and then monitor the achievement of that strategy. So actually doing things and making things happen rests with the executive team and the rest of the staff. Uh, and when council meets and, and also in a recent re overhaul, we've got a council board, which is a smaller group, which meets more often and is more agile. It, it's, it's not exactly like being non-executive directors, but it's a little bit like that yeah. in that you're tracking progress, asking questions, probing. And I suppose the way I would put it, again, within our sphere, it's more like being an external examiner. You're a critical friend. So it, it's there to, to look at things and make sure that everything is done properly, not to catch people out, but because it's important and it needs to be done right and we need to achieve objectives. Well, so, well, I think I'll just just to come on to yeah. that. I think we're going to have our first Northern Irish phrase: constructive uh -huh. criticism. That would be it. Yep, yep, constructive criticism. Yep, <laughs> uh, it's a phrase we like to use. Just a pity our politicians didn't take note of it. But I ever <laughs> will we'll not will not dive into that morass. But I think you know, having said that, the important thing is that if someone has a, an issue, um, I'm trying to think of something. Somebody had contacted me a while ago to say, I want to make sure that I'm doing the right thing 
to make sure I can get a practicing certificate. Yeah. And I said earlier that, you know, I, I'm on the standards board. So they'd looked at the rule book and, and the rule book wasn't as helpful perhaps or as clear as they wanted it to be. Mm -hmm. And and this I think gives an example of, of what the council member's role is. It's not for me to say, oh, you need to do this, this and this. But what I was able to do was make contact with a member of staff who oversees the practicalities, who made contact with the member and is helping them to make sure that they're able to fulfill the requirements. So it, it's really in, in, that, in the sense when someone has a problem, it's not that the council member can solve it because that would be overstepping the mark and getting involved in, in operations, which is the role of the team, but mm -hmm. you can point people towards the right people. Um, and, and in that context, I'm always very conscious of a job interview I had some years ago where I didn't get the job, but uh, I was asked a question. I, my, my background before education was mostly in, in SMEs, in fact, okay. exclusively. So I went for a job in uh, what at the time was Short Brothers. It's, it's, it's now part of Bombardier. And the question at the interview was, we're the biggest company in Northern Ireland. Why should we employ you? And it's probably the most difficult question I have ever been asked at an interview. Mm. Uh, and without going into the details of my answer, I was totally aware that as I answered it, that I wasn't going to get that job because the answer even to me didn't, didn't ring true. And things were less formal in those days, but the interviewer said to me, he said, Ronnie, looking at your CV, you've worked in small organizations. For you, the biggest challenge if you come here is the size of the organization and knowing who the right person is. It would take you nine, nine to 12 months to actually work out who it is you need to talk to on various issues. The key thing is finding who can make things happen. And that has stayed with me since mm. that, you know, if we've got a problem, we need support. All of us need support. We reach out to people and sometimes we expect the person we reach out to to be the person who'll solve it. And often it can't be, but what they can do is put us in touch with the right person. And that is something that I think is wonderful about being in council and that you can then put someone in touch and they find that a problem isn't such a big problem and it can mm. be overcome. And, you know, that's, that's great. And I think it's also a big part of the culture within ACCA and that people want to solve problems yeah. rather, than, rather than create hassle. Uh, so, you know, I suppose to go back to your question, that I believe is what council does, both if you like formally and the way in which I interpret the rule. And we're definitely there to be accessible to members. Uh, we can't take up battles on behalf of a member, but we can point people towards yeah, the right source advise. to solve the problems and provide advice. Yeah. Oh, spot on. So yeah, it's a case of anyone listening to this in terms of help or support or at least some mm -hmm. bit more clarity on the actual role. Yeah. I think I think absolutely spot on in terms of it. And also I just say the awareness of it as well, because it's it's sort of one of those things I remember as a qualifying member. I, I knew of them. I mm -hmm. knew they were mm -hmm. online. I saw bits yeah. in terms of that. But I completely agree with your point as to with, with technology and of COVID, it's a case of, well, you're able to actually speak with them and ACCA mm -hmm. are doing all these uh, coffee day, uh, coffee, yeah, day yeah. coffee hours where you're mm -hmm. discussing certain topics. And I'd highly recommend anyone listening to this to just give it a go, just yeah. pop along, say hello. Everyone shares this sort of LinkedIn network right. as well on there. And Absolutely. it breaks down that, that barrier as well so that it's not it just, just does, a case yeah. of, yeah. oh, oh, hello, James. Um, add and then you can see that I'm a, I'm a lecturer, a qualified member, X, Y, and Z. And then, and then oh, what, what else? You know, how can, in other what words, how, how can I, yeah. how can I help you? And yeah. uh, I can, I completely agree with, with your point in terms of a large organisation. I right, will know this from working at a university where you've got mm. marketing departments, you've got mm -hmm. HR, mm -hmm. you've got all these different yep. teams and business development. And I completely agree. It's just that one person who you need to speak to and it comes mm. with some experience on it, but yes. having a good knack for it as well when you're yeah. at these meetings to understand who's, who's in what position as well. So yeah. no, absolutely spot on. Uh, the only final bit would be as to, well, are there any other final uh, how shall I say, aspects that you're looking in the future as to helping other people out? Or are you looking for anyone in particular to collaborate on with any projects? Well, that's a good question. I, I'm always open to collaboration for the very simple reason that I think none of us on our own have all the answers. And education is funny in some ways. We work in teams, we work in departments, but people tend to work on their own. We, t we tend to be isolated. Uh, 
again, perversely, I think that's becoming less with COVID because we can connect in this way. But the main collaboration uh, that, that I'd be interested in at the moment, I've been throwing out these thoughts to people for a while is, you know, we all know that an important part of helping students get ready for assessments is practice questions. And if someone's doing ACCA exams, there are practice questions through the, the learning providers and so on. But in the universities, I think that's less the case. Uh, and I don't think that generally students make enough use of what we would call formative assessment or practice questions. Mm. And they can be difficult to write and they can take time. So I would love to link up with a few people and say, look, let's get into groups take a topic to break it down and you write 10 questions on that aspect i write 10 on that and if we did that with four people we'd all have 40 questions rather than 10 uh, and the workload is shared so that's that's the main way in which i would like to be collaborating in the future and i'm hoping that covid will give more opportunities for that because we can use the technology to do that um, mm -hmm. we can't do it for for live exams but also we can maybe share ideas i don't know about you but sometimes when you're writing exam questions you want them to be realistic, if not scenarios, that'll mm. put it in context. I find that the hardest part of writing an exam question. In fact, the hardest part of writing, the very hardest part is thinking of a name for a company and making sure it's not already in existence yes. in case you're going to get done for, for copyright. Oh, so again, collaboration agree. around that. You know? <laughs> agree. No, completely agree. And, it, and if I had a pound for every time someone's asked me, James, what's your best tip for yeah. ACCA exams and how to pass them? N number one, fundamentally, is pass papers. Mm -hmm. And I, I can't remember what the figure was in terms of it. I've done a video on my YouTube channel for it, but I think it's 86% or 96% of students use pass papers. <laughs> so that's saying 14% or 4% don't use them, yeah. which I find amazing. Yes, that, that's astonishing. But I think the other bit as well is that I think sometimes people need a bit of guidance on how to use them because um, I think too often students are focused on, I've got to get the right answer first time, yeah. as opposed to learning. Uh, and it's something that I've incorporated into my assessment in a final year module, mm. where uh, you know, we, the students do questions on a weekly basis, but instead of marking them, I get them to reflect on some of their answers at the end. Mm. And it's, it's really quite funny, year after year, your students go, why are you making us do this? Why are you not marking them? And then, you know, they're final year students, they go through the exam board, they graduate, and they're sending emails. Actually, it worked. Yes. Oh. And it's, it's not magic. It's not magic, but it's just really saying, let's take the questions, break them down, think about mm. them. Why have you got that in there? Where does it add value? And I think that's particularly the case for discursive questions. Yeah. Because so many people come into accounting because they're good with numbers. But in fact, I think the, the biggest change that we're seeing uh, that people are really taking on board. It's not just technology, but it's the fact that we've got to communicate. Well, and and discussion right. written questions are really important. Oh, I, the, the hours and the days of revision, Saturday morning, first thing, doing a full pass paper practice yep. and then reviewing it in the afternoon, mm -hmm. clear head, I've been mm -hmm. for a walk. Yeah. And, and fresh mind and just going in with that mindset of mm -hmm. it doesn't matter what I've got right yeah. or what I've got wrong. I'm just going to analyze it top to bottom. Yeah. And, and yeah. the learning curve on it is, is massive. It, it's just that time going through it. And, but but yeah. the, at the end of it, the end process is just psh, big tick. That is a productive day for me, I would say. It is. And I'll tell you what's funny about that. You know, we, you, you were joking me earlier about me finishing in 1981 and so on. Isn't it interesting how over the years, that's still the most effective way to study, despite all the technology and all the developments. It's still about breaking the question down, analyzing it, what's wanted, what do I know, what's relevant. You know, uh, what's that French says? Plus a chance, plus some M shows or something. <laughs> Je ne comprends pas. I think I don't ah, understand well, well, you. <laughs> I use that phrase quite a bit in my high level French oral. <laughs> Oh, oh, je joue au foot. <laughs> <laughs> well, this actually nicely leads us on to, again, the more informal po point of mm. the uh, the podcast as to, do I agree with you? So we, oh. we've had we've we've had questions of you've got two answers, but now these okay. are more open in terms of. Okay. So the viewers uh, listening in now will be, oh, the, this is this is the exciting <laughs> bit because he has, he doesn't know them, <laughs> he doesn't know them. So, first question. What is your favorite artist? 
So you can only listen to one artist for the rest of your life. Who artist, would you as an, artist as a painter or any form of the arts? Uh, music, music-wise. Okay, uh, it has to be Springsteen. Springsteen, oh, mm. rock and roll. Uh, see, I'm a massive Toto fan, so uh, everyone just right? everyone talks to me about Africa and stuff. They've got more <laughs> than one song. <laughs> But uh, yes, yeah, so I'm going to get loads of Toto <laughs> songs now after this. Uh, yeah. but, um, f okay, second one. What's your, what's your favourite go-to sport? And uh, from that, what's your favourite team? Uh, this will be controversial. It's football. Oh, okay. And it's Manchester, and it's Manchester United. Oh, you see, you're not going to make I, any friends I supporting know, them, Ronnie. But, well, we're professionals. You've got to speak the truth. You know? Well, well, I, I'm a Leicester City fan, and uh, yeah, uh, uh, football, or should I say, soccer, for, soccer. Our, yeah. for, for our probable um, maybe one one person viewing <laughs> from the US, but who knows? <laughs> but um, yeah. yes, but traditionally, for anyone who's not into football, uh, Leicester sell their best players to Man United for substantial amounts for of ridiculous money. Ridiculous amounts of money. Yes, good if, business if only, for Leicester. If only Borussia Dortmund would do the same. But oh. actually, in, in my defence. In my defence, uh, when George Best made his debut for Manchester United, I was six, and he was fourteen miles up from fourteen miles up the road. So, it's it's the local connection. Right. Well, it, of course, you do have Johnny right. Evans at Leicester. <laughs> we, we get the Man, Man United rejects. So that's it. Well, but uh, I think he's that, a mega player. He's he's playing very well for Leicester, and. Mm. Uh, my view when United let him go was that they shouldn't have and the mm. way he's performed since they shouldn't have. I mean, they're now looking for a centre half. They paid big money for Harry Maguire. They're looking for somebody to partner him. You know, the answer was there. Well, well, Johnny or Harry, if you are watching this, yep. that's all right. I'm, I'm more than happy to take the trip up to Manchester and you're more than welcome on the podcast. It's okay. We, we can chat away about that. But to, talking of places and uh, mm -hmm. where we go to, what's your favourite place you've ever visited? I think it was Santorini. Very uh, nice. Last year, somewhere I wanted to go for a long time. And it absolutely lived up to the hype. It was right. just jaw-dropping. Yes. Oh, you see Especially the photos the online. Especially ships left. Um, once all those people in their cruise ships went away back to their, yes. their floating hotels. You might but not. No, yeah. Absolutely wonderful. And, and fantastic people. That, that was for a holiday. I would have to say, uh, in terms of professional travel, I've had the privilege of traveling both the university and ACCA. And anywhere you go where there's ACCA members is always a blast. So I'm not going to pick anywhere mm. in, in that context. But it's just, uh, just as I was saying earlier, you meet nice people, you meet mm. kindred spirits, and people look after you. Oh, there'll be there'll be Santorini ACCA members out there, yes. and oh, again, if you're watching now, Santorini ACCA members, feel free to put it in the comments below. Absolutely, yeah, please as, do. Yeah, as yeah. to the advocacy going on right now, but uh, is there anywhere on your bucket list that you, you fancy going to that you've not had chance to yet? I think that that's got to be Las Vegas. It's just a, seems the most ridiculous place in the world, and I've never seen it. Gosh, uh, you know. So we'll, well see. I've never been there before, but I, mm. I did a, uh, a summer internship working as an accounts assistant at a summer camp. And uh, I heard from this chap from the year before who bet all of his salary on black and won. That was it. Really? So he, worked, he worked all summer, put it on black and won. He went all the way to Vegas. I couldn't believe it. <laughs> yes. How about that? And then I was sat there for the whole summer going, shall I go to Vegas and put it on red? <laughs> <laughs> I didn't. I didn't. So, no, but you uh, couldn't out of principle as a Leicester supporter. <laughs> yeah. you, you couldn't put it on red. No. No. <laughs> Sorry to any Forest fans out there, but uh, <laughs> I hope my tips on the channel help you. It's okay. <laughs> but uh, we'll come on to number four then. If you, yep. you could only have one meal for the rest of your life, or just call it your favourite meal, what would you go for? What is it? Well, that would be seafood linguine. Oh, proper stuff, that is. <laughs> good, good, good for the marathon training. Proper stuff. Uh, not good for the shirts. Uh, indeed, yeah. It depends on the portion size, I guess. Exactly. No, you, you have to actually put put the napkin back in the collar of the shirt for that and look like a complete muppet. <laughs> but small, I don't care. Small bowl today, please. That'll be it. <laughs> and, and, and finally, a drink of choice. What, what, what's your drink of choice? Once the sun's over the yard arm, it's a gin and tonic. Oh, gin and tonic, man. Gosh, you see, I, I'm, I'm an ale drinker, you see, ale drinker. Yeah. Or if, well, it's, yeah. if it's a particularly hot day, I'll, mm. I'll have some lager. But mm. uh, nice ale, 
that, that that's yeah. uh, that's what you want, I think. Well, a, yeah, on a hot day, parched the thirst, but more generally, something <laughs> like a nice G and T. Well, when, when we catch up in a few years' time, as 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 my career progresses, I think I might move into G and T. We'll see. That's that's the unwritten academic laws, baby. <laughs> Who knows? The law of it's not diminishing return. Oh, I don't know. It's a law. Yeah, there's there's obviously maybe we should invent a law for that. We could be, you know, oh, le- we, that's our legacy. Uh, I'm got, have we got anything else going as our legacy? <laughs> not for me. <laughs> you still have time. Well, 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 this this actually nicely nicely moves us on. I mean, it's 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 as if I've been doing this for years. This podcast malarkey, but uh, yes, on this pokey podcast, we are now going to move on to our insights and final part about experiences. So, Mister, I know. Calm down. Stay on your chair. Don't fall off. <laughs> there will be some young accountants out there, Mister mm-hmm. Patton. So. It, it, it's your time to shine. If we've got some some students who are just starting on their F papers, or we've got somebody who's actually just heard in the pub that uh, oh, you could be an accountant. Um, what, what what advice or what would you say to them from your experience? Hmm. That I mean that that is a really tricky question. I I think what I would say is first of all, talk if if you're talking about somebody really starting out, talk to people and find out what accounting is about. Um, I, I have a number of hobby horses, I have to say, but one of them I touched on earlier, accounting is about numbers. It is, we use numbers, but numbers are there to communicate. Uh, accounting is much more social than people think because you've got to understand people, you've got to understand their motivation, you've got to relate to people. So I think talk to people and get a really good feel for what accounting is about because you want to make sure you enjoy it. If you're starting out and you're in your early 20s, you're going to be at it. You know, again, to be slightly facetious for somebody in their 20s now, they're probably going to be at it for 50 years. So life's too short not to enjoy it. Part of the problem with that is what is accounting about? Well, that's nearly how long is a piece of elastic because there are many, many different roles in accounting. So don't get pigeonholed. Don't think that accounting is just about practice and don't think that practice is just about the big companies. Mm. So keep your options open. Uh, and, and finally, see everything you do as an opportunity to build skills because fine, getting a professional qualification is great and it accredits you and demonstrates you have a certain level of skills. But 10 years after you've qualified, people are still going to be asking about skills. Mm. Oh, so it's, it's continually building skills. Uh, I sort of would argue, to be honest, that this is probably the most, a really exciting time for people to get into accounting. The, the impact of technology is making it less, it never was dreary, but it's less dreary than people previously thought it was. Mm. Uh, I think the people thing is coming through. And I think what COVID has done it has made accounting more center stage because frankly, if the accounting function isn't performing and isn't up to standard, isn't fit for purpose, businesses won't survive. Completely agree. And I think people are seeing that. So it's a great time to get into accounting. And there are many, many different roles. So, I mean, if we take technology, some people get into accounting now, will probably learn coding and will do mm. a lot of stuff with heavy tech. Others will stand back and say, okay, I want to understand this, use it for different purposes. Mm. So don't allow yourself to be pigeonholed, build skills, but make informed decisions. Yeah, oh, 100%, completely agree. And th- there was a phrase in there of how long's a piece of elastic, I think you said. Yeah. I, it, yeah. Is that a Northern Irish phrase? I thought it's how long's a piece of string. Well, I, I've heard people say how long's a piece of string, but generally a piece of string doesn't stretch. Right. So the elastic stretches, and it's it even it's even more unknown. I, I don't know. It's a phrase that I every day is a school working. day. Yeah. Every day is a school day. But, it's uh, probably the one creative thing I've done in my life, but I must have heard it somewhere. <laughs> <laughs> I'm plagiarized, I'm sure. Well, I, I completely agree with your advice. As to, I think also just, just getting stuck into it as well as to try and just mm. work out, do a bit of research. And there are loads of free online webinars with mm. ACCA that you can, you can just pop in for an hour, understand with somebody who's worked in that field for 10, 15, 20 yeah. years. And you go, yeah, yeah that kind of, kind of mm-hmm. is something that I quite like yeah. to learn a bit more about. And you go onto the website and there's a loads right. of resources on there. The website is great for that. Uh, that's a very, as you say, a very easy way for people to get that feel and, and, and get the, the experience and feedback from other people. 
Oh, 100%. It's a case of just see, see what you enjoy. And, and I agree with you. It's a case of one thing I've learned over lockdown is it, it's a case of you just got to try things and never use the word of failure. It's always a lesson that <laughs> yep, you, you yep. said, oh, well, that didn't quite work, but I've learned from it this yep. in the same way yep. that uh, it, well, everything I, is. I'm absolutely with you on that. I mean, what, just when you're saying it, one thing comes to mind is why is WD-40 called WD-40? Oh gosh, you put me on the spot now. What was it? It, this was, was... It, was the four, it was the 40th attempt to get it right. Oh, was it? Oh, yeah. right. So 39 times didn't work. Yeah. It worked the 40th time. Wow. Uh, and, you know, they're, they're, you know, penicillin's the greatest example of something that was discovered by accident. So there are many, many examples of, of things that went wrong. I, I'm sitting here and I don't move the computer. You see the chaos in my desk, but post it notes <laughs> are all around me. Yeah. They were invented by mistake. Wow, it's a case of, I'm sure the viewers can see now that this is a fully non-scripted, apart from five <laughs> little bullet points, uh, podcast where anything could come up as to, who knew, WD-40. That's, yeah. uh, what about that's... Captain Scarlet? <laughs> anything can happen in the next half hour. <laughs> Well, nicely moving on back onto uh, ACCA now, oh, but Captain Scarlet in terms of it. But uh, how do you see yourself progressing with ACCA moving forward? Or if someone's watching and wants to get involved with ACCA more, what would be your sort of recommendations there as to how they can best do that? Yeah. I think the, the best thing is get involved in, in the online meetings and the, the face-to-face -face meetings when they return. Two reasons. Lots of the online meetings will, will, as well as helping you meet other people, they will introduce you to different perspectives. You'll build your skills. Yeah. Uh, the face-to-face -face meetings obviously do both of those things, but I think the online is great because you can reach further and you can get to events that physically you couldn't get to. Uh, I think as well as that is focus on the skills and look at it as a way of your professional development. ACCA do an awful lot, as you've, you mentioned the website, we've got professional insights, we've got lots of CPD there. Um, we've got a new app, I think just came out yesterday for accounting business or our, yeah. our magazine. So it's very easy to get, get access to all of those things, make use of them. But most of all, even while we're in this kind of theoretically disconnected world, keep connected with people, build, build your connections. Um, because There'll always be times when somebody is reaching out and saying, you know, I, I'm, I'm looking at this idea, I need this or that or the other, and the person we're thinking of might be able to provide it, or she can be on the other foot, you reach mm. out for help. My experience is if you reach out to someone within ACCA for help, they're not going to say no. They might say, well, I don't know about that, but mm. maybe you should try I'm, someone else. Exactly. You know, and, you, and as I was saying earlier, you get passed on. But it's really about getting involved, and it's about seeing your your professional body i when, when someone posts on linkedin to say that they become a member i post congratulations welcome to the acca family now if someone looks oh. at that over 10 they'll say gosh he's not very creative but it's a phrase i use quite deliberately because it is like a family mm. we don't all agree as in most families but generally we're there to support one another mm. and i think it's about that so your professional body is a professional network that will support you will help you develop It'll help you to develop skills. And, you know, without getting too carried away, that, that gives people a fulfilled life. It's not just about a career. It's about doing something that you enjoy. And, and when you look at some of the posts some of our members put up uh, or working in, in specific spheres, you can see that different people enjoy different aspects of the accounting profession, oh, which is why yeah. I said earlier, get the information, see what's right for you. Oh, I, I see your posts on there and, and, and I'm sort of, as I'm flicking through it and I'll, I'll say congratulations, but I must, I must commend you on that as well. I mean, mm. I'll, I'll also have to go back and see if you put it on mine when I post it on, because I'll, I'll have to have words. This would be it. Yeah, I could be in trouble now. <laughs> yes. And uh, anyone watching, uh, check your photo, what you posted on LinkedIn. If Ronnie hasn't mentioned you in it, feel free to put it in the comments below <laughs> so that I can follow up on that. This is how YouTube works, Ronnie. This is it, you see. Who That's knows? the downside of connections, isn't it? <laughs> well, well, we're moving forward, moving yeah. forward. But uh, you, you did touch on lockdown as well, on the, as well mm -hmm. there. Have, has anything changed uh, in yourself or the way you work from lockdown? Or what, what have you learned from lockdown? Uh, I, I think what I've learned is something 
that I suspected before, and that is that technology is a tool. It's not always the answer, hmm. but it can do good things for us. Uh, you know, and what we're doing here is a prime example. Um, you, you said to me that you had set this up and it was easy to do. I'm saying, I believe you. I'm not sure that I have the tech skills to do that, but you know, it's about using technology. And actually then I would broaden that and say, without wanting to become functional or, or using things or people, it's back to that thing of saying, you know, where can I derive a benefit from this? Mm. Uh, for me, one of the biggest benefits is building relationships, getting to know people, and then, yeah. you know, the mutual help comes in. But there are other aspects to it around the skills. So it's, it's, it's really about saying, how do I make best use of this? Yeah. As oh. opposed to just, just getting into it and, and, and looking at it. Oh, I completely um, agree. Yeah. And I suppose the other thing, the, the key thing, uh, when you do spend a few days sitting in the same place, working, looking at the screen, uh, personal relationships are key. Mm. And that wasn't something people talked about when I started in accounting. I don't think mm. it was talked about until more recently, but I think we're seeing that. And that's why I was saying earlier, you know, accounting is more social than, than you would expect because um, if you've got a problem, for example, in financial accounting with, with an accounting standard, you know, you can reach out to different discussion forums and get advice, mm. uh, you know, so you get the technical stuff, but you also build relationships. Oh, hundred percent. It, it comes down to that phrase of it's not sometimes what you know, it's actually who you know <laughs> who as you well. Know. Yeah. It's yeah. a very true free is that. Yeah. yeah. And, and this is one of the things that from the podcast, I had a look online. I thought I'll do a bit of research on it and loads of things on there. Oh, uh, make sure it's all professional and it's well scripted and all this sort of stuff. I, well, hang on. That's how you run your podcast. And they were saying, Oh, should we, you should do a funky background on these things. Mm -hmm. I went, no, th this is, this is where, I work in terms of yeah. it, in the same sense that is you, that is your office in terms of it. So yeah, it, it's just so that people actually get to know uh, the actual uh, accountant and the person behind it. That that is the main thing yeah. of of the podcast in itself, and the reason for today's talk. That I must say, there've been so many things, and I've got so much out of it today as well. I must say because one of the things that I've had from lockdown is is just continually just developing that that relent, relentless as to well bit more bit more today bit mm -hmm. more today bit more today and then the, i read online is that one percent rule where if you just have the yes, phrase yes, yes. we just say just try and be one percent better than you were yeah, the day before yeah. and once yeah. you break it down just keep it as simple as that you go mm -hmm. i can do that and once and it compounds over the year and that's it so that, that's the yep. main thing very and, powerful and, that's and, a very powerful lesson yeah i think we could i think we could write a song about that and start a band good yeah well, you know, you know, it's one of those things. Now, the other final thing from the podcast, as, as we sort of wind it to the end, is is the uh, sustainability aspect, as you and I are both interested in. So for anyone listening for the first time, every single person that comes onto the podcast, I plant a tree for them as well. And I show them the, the acorn as I have it here. So, Ronnie, that is the one that comes on here for you. Look at that. That's a very fine acorn. I mean, I, that, is, that. That, is, that is going to be a sort solid oak that one i think on there so uh um if the podcast takes off i mean uh gosh Ma martin lewis will be in contact netflix um jonathan ross you know all of these people that i'm sure are listening right now yeah and and then i'll be sat on the sofa with with graham norton and uh yeah that'll be it yeah and the rest will be history indeed yes ha hello angelina <laughs> gosh well it's 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 a case of is there any sort of final words as to uh, anyone listening today as to well what going forward what would you what would you say that you're planning on doing you'd recommend for for others i think i think my, my advice is do get involved with acca you'll enjoy it you'll get a lot out of it you'll benefit from it i, I would defy anyone who's a member not to benefit from getting involved Com completely agree. If, if you'd have asked me when I first started out as a qualified member as to the stuff that you can get involved in and the contacts you meet and the opportunities out there and the br bridging of your network and the broadening of it as well, it, 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 it's as much as you want to take from it. And I completely agree with what you said earlier on as to it, you get out what you put in. It, it's, <laughs> it just works like that. So I'm, I must say as well, as we're coming to the end now, a massive Massive thank you. And, and as of the way of the modern technology, I, I'll have to give you 
a round of applause on here of one person. This is how it works now, where if it's someone's birthday online, we all have to... <laughs> Uh, the, the, this, this is the pinnacle of, of 2020 for Ronnie. Well, what, what can I say? Other than always good to talk to you, James. Oh. I thoroughly enjoyed it. So thanks, thanks for the, the opportunity. And thanks for the crack, as oh. you say over here. And that's not what people mean in the United States. <laughs> For, for our one viewer that's gone yeah. now. But yeah. anyway, um, if you would like access to all of my free materials and to keep in touch with all of the other episodes that I'll be recording, we'll probably do one a week with various members from around the world. Ronnie's been representing Northern Ireland today. So if you'd like to get in touch um, the, and to be on, on as well, uh, the waiting list is, uh, is, is as long as my arm and mm -hmm. uh, I've got pretty short arms. So... <laughs> If uh, if you've enjoyed today's video, feel free to give it a like below, the subscribe button's down below as well, and drop any comments down there. But as always, everyone, on that bombshell, I'll see you next time. Cheers. Thank All the you, best. Ronnie. Cheers, James.